Okay. Has the recording started? Yes, I just started it. Okay. Okay. Good evening, everybody. My name is Helen Hoffman. I'm the New York State PTA Secretary, and I'm also the designated officer for membership. Um, I am also the host for tonight's chat. Um, I'd like to start tonight by introducing our president, um, Mrs. Jane Horsher. Jane, would you like to say a few words? Yes, I would. I just want to welcome everybody tonight to our first membership web chat. Um, we're very excited about having a new topic, and I'm sure you'll have a lot of great questions. Um, and thank the participants for helping to bring this about. Um, thank you all for joining in. I hope you have a great time. Thanks, Jane. I also have a couple of other introductions um, and acknowledgements to make tonight. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Linda LaRusso, who is our communications slash marketing associate, who is going to be our tech guru tonight. And joining her is going to be our treasurer, Patty Frazier. Um, she will be assisting Linda with the tech and she'll also be assisting me with the chat box. Um, I'd like to introduce, I don't see her right this second, but Kyle Bilipipitsky, who is our executive director. Um, I don't know if she can unmute herself. There she is. Kyle says hello. Hello, everybody. I'm glad you're here. Okay. And Kyle, may, we may call on you to answer a few questions um, that are in the chat box right now or the questions that we previously received. Um, so, you know, stay tuned. Um, but I also, I want to also introduce our panelists for tonight and our presenters. Um, first, I'd like to start out by introducing Mary Sertemayor, who is hey, our everybody. coordinator um, for New York State PTA. Um, Mary um, has an exciting team and her co-presenter tonight will be Dana Welsh, who is our New York State PTA membership and insurance manager. Um, Hi, is, everyone. I'm here. <laughs> she's not turning her, her screen on, but as you can see, we're all wearing our PTA Your Way. And Mary and I both have our shirts on, although you can't see my shirt right now. Um, but we are wearing our shirt, and this is our New York State PTA logo. Before we begin, I have a few housekeeping rules that I must um, talk to you about first. Hold on one second. Um, I think the rules, okay. Um, tonight's topic pertains to membership. Um, so I just wanna say if there were other questions um, in there about other issues, uh, we will address them on future webinars. But right now, today, we're going to be asking questions about membership. There's gonna be a short presentation by Mary and Dana, and then we're going to take every one of your questions as much as we can um, within the next hour. Um, again, like I said, our PTA logo is uh, Membership Your Way. That's our New York State logo. So if you see it around, um, if you see it on the back of our cars as you're driving by, please make sure you honk a couple of times to let us know that you support PTA. Um, now, one of the other housekeeping rules is we, to submit your questions, um, you can go to chat at nyspta.org and type in your questions and Patty is going to be monitoring and sending me the questions to ask tonight. Um, we've received a lot of questions so far, so we are gonna start with those questions. Um, one of the things that I do wanna say, and my team actually wants to say is that all questions are important to us. And some of your questions, we may need to talk to you directly or to answer you directly because it has to do, it pertains directly to your, what's going on in your situation or with your unit. So one of the things we are asking for the questions tonight is if you could do us a favor and make sure that you ask a general question so that everyone on this call tonight will benefit. And we will make sure that any questions that are not answered asked tonight will be answered by either a telephone call um, or we will make sure to answer you via email. So without ado, I want to present my wonderful team, Mary and Dana. Go ahead, ladies. 
Hi guys, um, thank you so much for coming on to this web chat. I'm very happy to be able to present this to you tonight. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Does everybody see my presentation? Yes? Okay, great. So as Helen mentioned, my name is Mary Sotomayor. I'm the membership coordinator. Um, we've put this uh, little slideshow together for you so we can give you some information that you might not have seen or to give you some more information on what's going on in membership. Okay, so as you may have heard, PTA is no longer a noun. It's not, to, it's not a person, place, or thing, but it's a verb, okay? Um, our PTA um, is here to invest in our children's potential, to volunteer for our children's potential, and to advocate for our children's potential. But it all starts with membership, okay? So we want you to know that you have a lot of resources here in membership, especially on New York State PTA, and we'd like you to use all of them. Um, have all of you seen the newest New York State PTA newsletter? If you haven't, we're gonna be going over a little bit about what is inside of it, what you can expect to see, okay? This is our September issue of our membership newsletter, and it's really, really important because sometimes when you're doing uh, things for your PTA, there are little um, information that you wish you had, or maybe one person has it and not everybody has shared it. In this membership newsletter, we hope to give you all the tools and resources that you need to expand your membership team. These two little chickadees are my girls. Um, and if you happen to have a magnet, we'd love to see a picture of you and your kids. And you might see it displayed on the next membership newsletter. Okay. Some of the things that you'll find in our newsletter is a way to stay in the know, as I had mentioned. So you'll hear about new flyers that we've been developing, the awards that you should be focusing on this month, and the information about the awards and any updates that we have about the awards. Okay, we also provided a monthly checklist for you. In this monthly checklist, it explains to you um, what's going on in Member Hub, things that you should be doing on your unit. Um, and we also, which I'm very excited about, we highlight regions, uh, units and regions that are really doing it right now. So if your unit is really, really kicking butt in membership, we're highlighting you every month. And we hope that you get to see your unit highlighted in our membership newsletter, okay? So our membership newsletter is on the move. And uh, we, I wanted to share with you a little bit about the October focus for this month. So one of the things that I'm really excited to share with you is our team has been working on a page called How to PTA in a Virtual Environment. I'm sure you're wondering what are some tips you can do, some, some different things that you can do now that we're in this virtual environment? Um, how can you expand your membership? Um, we will place this link in the chat so that you can get a chance to look at this page if you haven't already. And please, if you have any additional information or things that you think should be there, let us know and we'll put it on. Um, this month, we are focusing on our terrific teachers and super staff. So you wanna make sure to ask all of your teachers and your staff to join. And by the way, if you have not joined yet, if your spouse or children haven't joined yet, we ask if you could please make sure that you're a member today, okay? You wanna make sure to go into your member hub checklist and complete the items that you might have outstanding. I'll let Dana get more into uh, details with that, but I wanted to put it on your radar for our October focus. Uh, the next thing we'd like you to do for October is to email your online store, um, email your past members and ask them to join. Um, you can use the people tab to send a quick message to all the people uh, that you have listed there. Okay, and lastly, we wanna make sure that you're paying the state and national dues for all members who have joined to date by October 31st. These are some of the things that you'll see on the newsletter as checklist items so that you know that you've taken care of them and things that'll help you on your membership journey, okay? So as I had mentioned before, one of the things that you'll see on our newsletter are all the new um, ads, any new 
uh, flyers that we've created for you guys. In particular, the most recent ad that we've put together um, is remember there is no T in PTA without teachers. The 10 reasons teachers belong in PTA and membership. Uh, this is for middle school, it is for elementary school, and it's also for high school. So we will also be sharing a link so that you can see where that ad resides. It's going to be a part of your uh, membership toolkit resources. Okay. One of the other pages that our team has been working on is a joint PTA search page. Um, this page allows you to go on very easily to find out what your unit's um, number is and go ahead and become a member. So you don't have to go looking for it everywhere. Sometimes it can be challenges to figure out where to go to become a member. And this is a one-stop shop, so you can help your parents find it quickly. Okay. I'm gonna be turning this over, this presentation over to Dana. Uh, Dana, are you on with us? Yes, I am. Right. Go ahead, just, I will mute myself, go ahead. All right, and those uh, links that Mary was talking about, I did post them in the chat box for everyone. Uh, there's an archive for our newsletter, the virtual environment page, our uh, membership toolkit, and also the search page. So all of those links are there for you. But I wanted to point out another link for resources or another way for you to get resources regarding Member Hub. So everything that we get, all the questions that we take in, we try to compile everything for you in helpful resources on the website. So this picture here shows you that if you go to the website, nyspta.org, and you hover over membership, you'll see the Member Hub help page listed there at the bottom. So once you click into that, Mary, if you can go to the next slide, you're going to see resources um, that both the New York State PTA has available to you and also that Member Hub has available to you. So. The first section here is what Member Hub can uh, do as far as helping you. And there are so many things that, um, so many help articles, there is workshops recorded that you can listen to. There's workshops that you can um, be a part of, uh, schedule to attend. And there's also a very important, the one I've highlighted in green here is a, to schedule a one-on-one -on -one training call with Member Hub. They want every unit in New York State to be able to get help one-on-one. -on -one. So if you need help transferring to the new store 2.0, which is the newest and greatest um, online store that we have available through Member Hub, um, they will help you with um, getting set up on that new version of the store. They'll help you with what's available now in our new Givebacks program, which is very exciting um, way to have passive income and to help our parents get dis discounts on items that they might be buying anyway. And then the PTA gets to benefit from that as well. So please take advantage of scheduling that one on one call with them and they will give you 30 minutes and you're going to be talking to not just an, an employee of Member Hub, you'll actually be talking to another officer. This is an officer in a PTA who uses Member Hub who really loves it and who knows all there is to know about it, who can help you do the same. So you really are chatting with someone who is, has been there, done that, and they want to help you as well. There's also a way for you to submit a request for help with a ticket to Member Hub. So all of these resources here, um, I've kind of highlighted some of the help articles that might be pressing. And Mary, if you can go to the next slide. I'll show you um, this, the PTA resources that we've put together here at uh, New York State. I've made some videos, um, you've probably seen some of them, <laughs> they're kind of funny. Um, how to enter members, how to log in, how to um, send messages. And then also some of the newer resources are the frequently asked question document. We have updated it with the new store 2.0. Um, resources. We got a lot of questions. The webinar that we did with Member Hub on September 29th to announce that um, new venture into Store 2.0, we've recorded that and that's available for you to listen to. And then all of those questions that were raised that night, we've answered them in the new frequently asked question document. I do need to upload that and link that to the site tomorrow. So please somebody remind me to do that. <laughs> I just updated that today. 
And then uh, we have information about um, different uh, things that you need to be aware of as regarding sweepstakes and raffles in New York, because that's part of the new fundraising module. So there's a lot of information here that you really can quickly find answers and get resources um, that you need for help. And my email's on here for the state office for help, your region membership chairs and your region directors. This link here at the bottom links you to a page that tells you exactly how to contact them. They should be your first um, you know, call, your first email. They are there to help you and they want to make sure that you're successful. So I think, Mary, we have a couple more slides just to show you um, some of the member hub information. Yes, so <laughs> membership can be 24 seven, open all the time. If you set it up and have your online store, people can join your PTA any time of the day or night and that's not a problem. We also have the new, part of the new store 2.0 is uh, no fuss fundraisers. And there is just a lot of information, a lot of things that you can do online virtually um, to have fun with your members and to raise money or, or do what you need to do as a PTA in today's environment. So there's lots to see, lots of new things to do in Member Hub. So please go ahead and update to the new store uh, as quickly as you can, and you can all get started. All right, Mary, back to you. Thank you, thank you, Dana. Um, so as Dana mentioned, um, all of us on the membership team are invested in your success, but we want you to reach out to your RMCs because they are your first line of defense. So I've placed this here, but again, we have links, we have different places where you can access this information, but this is who your regional membership chair is. Okay, and I'm gonna go to the next slide and we will share the information in the chat box as well. Okay. Again, on behalf of the membership team, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I know this year hasn't been easy, but um, when we advocate for our kids all together, we're unstoppable. So um, I'd like to open it up to any questions at this time. And um, my information is below and please send me an email if you had any other questions that you wanted to ask privately. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Dana. Um, so we have, gotten a few questions. Like I said, a lot of questions came in before the chat. So I'm going to start out with the first question, which I'm going to address to both Mary and Dana, because it's a two-part question. So who should be receiving the membership emails and what should they do if they are not? Uh, meaning mem membership, the membership newsletter? I would presume it, it was the newsletter, but also I know there's membership emails that are also sent out. Um, you know, um, so who are the who are the people that are receiving these emails? Um, are they membership chairs? Are they officers? Uh, is it every unit member? Who is who? Who should be receiving these emails? So all officers should be receiving this email. And actually, as a personal favor, I'd like all of you, when we get off this chat to take a look in your email box and just check your junk mail, uh, just to make sure that you're not getting spammed. We wanna make sure that all the juicy tidbits and resources that we're making available to you guys, you're able to receive. Yes, so when uh, a newsletter is sent out, it does go to all officers and the all membership chairs. So anybody that is listed on your officer page. So you wanna make sure that you've updated your officers for this year because that makes a difference if I or um, anyone on the membership team sends an email through Member Hub, we're only going to be able to get it to the current officers and membership chairs. So if you haven't put in your 2021 officers yet, that makes a big difference on whether or not you're receiving all of the communications that come from New York State PTA or from this membership team. So I urge you all to look at your member hub officers uh, page and make sure that it says 2021 and that you've started that update. Even if the officers have remained the same for this year, that's not a problem. Go ahead and enter everyone uh, again the same and then you'll be updated and you'll be able to receive those emails. 
Yes, I totally agree with you, Dana. That is so important that people do complete their, what, uh, what used to be called a, a Form A is now your officer's update because if that isn't been updated, then you will not be receiving them. And also there is a place, Dana, um, can you just confirm there is a place on the form that does allow um, if you're not an officer, but a membership chair, aren't the membership chairs also included in that, um, in the information in that area? Yes, on the officer page, it does include membership chairs and you can have multiple membership chairs this year. That is a change from previous years. So you are able to add more than one if you have more than one helping your unit in that area. Now, besides all the great information that you have in the newsletter, um, am I just supposed to keep it myself or what should I be doing with it once I receive it? The minute you get it, you share. <laughs> you want to read through, you want to soak it up, and you want to share it with your unit. You want to share it with everyone. Um, please don't take for granted that you think your other officers or people in your unit have received it. Um, make sure that when you receive the information, you let everybody know. And then act on it too, because we do have your things to focus on for the month and for to get ready for the next month. It gives you a little checklist. So take a look at that, spend a few minutes and just make sure that you're prepared for what's coming and that you've actually done everything on the checklist for this month and um, share the success stories with uh, the rest of your membership. I think that will be a great, uh, great thing to do. Okay, that sounds great. So Mary, I'm gonna address this question to you now. Um, what are the steps that you are taking um, as membership chair? What would the steps be that you would be taking to reach out to all families in your community? Um, the first thing I would do is make sure that uh, you're making a space for communication, right? So you wanna make sure that you're creating Zoom opportunities where you can get to know the families in your area. Uh, you wanna create um, opportunities for people to get together, get together virtually. Um, and I would also make sure that on your Facebook page and emails, you're communicating things that are going on because at the end of the day, we're an advocacy group and the way we advocate best is with each other. So we need to make sure that we're keeping each other informed and using the tools that we have at our, at our uh, disposal. Okay. So um, Dana, I'd like to address you with this question. Um, parents have questioned me about the additional fee when they're paying their dues. So I, I presume it's the additional fee that um, Member Hub charges when, when somebody is um, um, joining and, and, and submitting it through Member Hub. Dana, can you explain what the additional fees are, please? Sure, no problem. Um, when someone joins online, they have to process that payment with a credit card. So those credit card processors charge a fee based on the amount of the transaction. So there's a percentage plus a 50 cents per transaction fee. And these are typical fees charged for all credit card processors. And then Member Hub does have a small platform fee that's included in there. It's like 1.2% or something small, just so that we can keep the software free of charge to all of our PTAs and that Member Hub has the resources that they need to keep the software up to date and to give us all of those great resources that we want through the software itself. So that's the platform fee with the um, credit card processing fee that you see charged on those um, purchases. Um, Dana, can you also clarify that the unit can still accept cash and checks the traditional way? How, the, how is it that the, the unit itself, um, you know, if, if, if somebody doesn't wanna use their credit card, are there other ways, I guess the question is, can they, can they pay by cash? Can they pay by check? Absolutely, the unit can use their traditional uh, membership forms um, in whatever way they're able to communicate with their parents this year. Um, however, they are able to accept cash and checks. They certainly can do that and they don't have to have uh, online payment. That's just there for the convenience of those parents who wish to transact in that manner. 
So they can certainly accept cash and checks and enter those members on Member Hub as they've done in the past. Okay. Well, thank you, Dana. Mary, I have a question, another question for you. How do you unite parents around the benefits of PTA slash PTSA during the limits placed by pandemic mandates for in-person meetings and effective organizing? Okay. Um, thanks for that question. I know every unit is different. I know every school, every district is different. Um, Again, the best way that you're going to want to figure out how to maneuver in this um, environment of being completely virtual is first check out our virtual page. We've placed some, inf some useful tools and information in there for how you can get together with the family, um, the families in your unit, the families in your district. Um, you could have an online virtual dance party. You can have a drive through trick-or-treating. Um, you can do a pumpkin carving contest. You could do it virtually. You're just going to have to change the way you see things and figure out how you can make it virtual. The whole point is you want to make sure that you have a connection with the people in your community. And the best way to do that is to create um, little mini events that can create a buzz around your PTA. Um, you know, you can do a drive-in movie night. You guys can do a paint night. These are all things that you can do virtually. Um, you know, in terms of uh, chalk the walk, I know some some of our units, uh, neighboring units, also have um, placed some chalk on the the sidewalks before the kids went to school. Uh, which was a nice opening to, you know, back to school night, things like that. Oh, that sounds like a lot of good, interesting stuff. I appreciate that, Mary. Um, I have a question that I'm going to ask Kyle to come in, but I'm also, um, Mary and Dana may also want to add something to what Kyle is going to be asking. So Kyla, there you are. Okay. So I got a question that said, um, I had heard that AIM will not cover us for infectious disease. So should we have in-person events? And then some of these events were during school hours on school grounds and would be combined with our membership drop drive. What do we do? Sure, Helen, that's a great question, and we are getting that a lot. Just as FYI, our region directors and executive committee and Dana and AIM are right now working on a document to get out to all of our unit leaders about this issue. Um, so communicable diseases, which COVID is one, is uh, disclaimed or not included in any insurance policy. So it's likely that your school insurance also doesn't cover uh, claims against COVID. What does that mean? That means that um, if you, for, if for instance, uh, have a lawsuit um, that your unit was negligent um, in giving someone COVID, which is very hard to prove as a lawyer, but if your unit has that lawsuit against them, there is no coverage um, for your legal fees. Um, so in this memo, what we are going to say to our units is that it is very imperative that if you decide to move forward with in-person events, which um, AIM is allowing, um, but it's something very important that you have to think about, um, you have to do a number of things. Um, you have to make sure that everybody is in mass. You have to make sure there's the, you're following both the State Department of Health, the State Education Department, and the CDC guidelines for social distancing. Um, we are very highly discouraging any meals because at that point your mask would be coming off your face. Um, so this is a conversation that you need to have with your unit leaders so you can uh, understand the risks and rewards of having those in-person events right now. Um, I also know that many school districts are not allowing, um, I'll say outsiders, even though we are the par parent, the PTA, uh, they're not allowing anybody other than educational staff uh, into school buildings. Um, so that is also a conversation that you want to have with your school principal and superintendent, because at this time, they may be saying, let's just wait right now. Right now, we're just going to have our students, faculty, and staff in our school buildings, and not not volunteers. Um, so please look uh, look for the memo. We're really hoping to get that out next week to you guys. Um, as I mentioned, our, our region directors are going to look at that again tomorrow uh, with our executive committee. 
Um, and as, as I had reiterated, um, communicable diseases are not covered underneath our insurance policy. So it is imperative if you decide to have those in-person events that you are following CDC, State Department of Education, and Department of Health guidelines. Helen, does that cover it? That does cover it. So I'm going to ask my membership experts, so how do we hold a, a virtual membership drive since we're no, since a lot of our events are going to be, like Mary said, doing the virtual, like a Zoom or something, how would we hold the drive piece of it um, to be successful? Because I know people are very concerned about having successful drives this year. So give us some ideas about membership drives that, you know, um, how we would do it. Mary or Dana? So the first thing you'd want to do is make sure that you've uh, talked with your team, made sure that you've created an agenda and you've shared this agenda with everyone. Um, when they're coming onto a Zoom meeting, uh, things are gonna be a little different. Uh, you're not gonna be able to pass around um, you know, loose pieces of paper, things like that. So you wanna make sure that everybody has what they need. Um, you want to make sure that the meetings are meaningful. When you get onto a Zoom meeting, um, you're going to have a lot of parents that are going to have questions, are going to want to understand what's going on uh, to the capacity that PTA um, gives them information, and you want to make sure that you're ready. Uh, so that means making sure that all of your reports are available, links are available in your chats, uh, the distribution of, of the invite goes out more than one time. Um, we just wanna do a lot of hand-holding this year and make sure that everybody feels comfortable with the new way. Everybody adapts very quickly. They just wanna make sure that they know what they can expect. Is that right, Dana? Yes, definitely. And I would like to add, because I know that this has come up this year, we've seen a lot of tickets come into the Member Hub support site um, with parents trying to join your PTA, but they've got the wrong link. So they've received a link that ends in .com versus .store, which is your online store link. So make sure you check your links carefully to make sure that you're sending your parents to the right place because they're wanting to join your PTA and they're having trouble. So we wanna make sure that the link works, that you've um, tested it, um, that you know that it's the right place and that you get that information out to everyone. If you are having a Zoom meeting like Mary was talking about, uh, make sure you send out your um, forms ahead of time. You can adapt the one that we have in our membership toolkit if you'd like and customize it for your PTA and have that available for those parents who don't want to use the online link but who want to fill out the form and send it back to you. So um, you can definitely have that available to them so they can download it and easily join your PTA. Perfect. And I'm just going to add my two cents. My ladies know that one of my favorite sayings in the whole wide world is membership is everyone's job. So like Mary and Dana just told you, there are multiple people that need to be a part of this team in order for you to have a successful year. So make sure that every time that you do something, when you're planning your membership drive, you're not doing it by yourself. Um, everybody, membership is everybody's job. Um, and I, I wish everybody could just repeat that with me. Um, one time, membership is everybody's job. Um, the most important phrase that you'll ever hear besides PTA your way. So, okay, um, I'd like to move on to the next question, if that's okay with you ladies. And again, I think that this could be answered by Mary first, and then Dana, I'd like a little bit, you know, you to add as well. Um, with this year being difficult to get PTA members, um, as well as executive boards and executive committees, we all know that, um, can the membership goals be adjusted? And why or why not? I'll take this one. Um, so we completely understand how you feel. Um, we kept the goals the same this year to be fair to everyone. Um, we know this year's not everyone's going to reach their goal, but that's okay. Um, we wanna make sure that it's an equal playing field for all. Okay. Dana, would you like to add a little something to that or are you good with that answer? 
No, I think uh, Mary summed it up pretty well. We just want to make sure we have everything uh, equal across the board and we understand uh, just as, as units understand that we might, you know, only get to a certain percentage of our goal this year, but we're certainly going to shoot for the top number and we're going to, um, you know, all strive for that together. Perfect. Okay. So the next question is really a combined question and it has to do with incentives. Um, as a way of thanking our members, I was wondering if it's acceptable to do, a, uh, to do membership prize drawings um, for all our unit PTA members. And um, yeah, answer that question first and then I'll ask the next piece. But they wanna know if it's acceptable to do um, membership prize drawings um, for all members of the unit. Absolutely. Um, in the beginning of your year, you should have, your unit should have met um, and approved your, um, your, your general budget. membership would have appro approved your, um, your, budget. Line, your budget line. And um, you want to make sure that you keep it conservative. You don't want to overspend, but a small prize is fine. Okay, and the second part of that question is, what about door prizes for members at meetings? Once the in-person meetings resume, can we give door prizes, um, you know, to enhance people to come into our meetings? The same. Um, I think this would have been a part of your budget, a line item. Um, but in addition to that, uh, you know, I know there have been other events that you might have uh, joined in the past. You might have some pens or some, you know, pads with the New York State PTA logo on it or your region or the membership magnet. Um, these are great door prizes. People love to win things. Perfect. Okay. And this also is another um, incentive. Um, are units allowed to give um, donated items or to purchase small gift cards for prize drawings to thank um, to thank people such as like the faculty for joining um, and or to promote membership? Are they allowed to do that if they want to you know, um, give something to the staff, such as like a small gift card or uh, donate I donated items. Is that is that acceptable as well? So this is a part of the same family of questions where I would say yes, as long as it's a part of your budget. Uh, but again, we don't want to give out fifty or a hundred dollars. Uh, we want to make sure that we keep it very conservative, and it's more important that we're thanking them and telling them how much we appreciate them. Yes. And Helen, a great gift would be one of our PTA Your Way magnets. Yeah. This year. <laughs> yeah. You. And they and where can they get that, Dana? Actually, we have them available for sale on the New York State um, website, uh, the New York State Member Hub site. So if you, um, I could put up a link in the chat box for that. Yes, that would be great. Hopefully we'll uh, not, not only get more members tonight, but we'll also get more PTA Your Way going on. Okay, um, so this is, a, this is like a housekeeping question um, and I'll answer this one. It said, will tonight's membership web chat be recorded um, so I can view it tomorrow? So we have been told that yes, we are, uh, we are um, taping this, recording this um, chat tonight. Um, it will not be available tomorrow, but it will be available within the next couple of days. Um, once the site, once the recording happens, um, our wonderful Linda LaRosa, um, she has a couple of things that she has to do. Um, and Mary, we're also going to um, put up your uh, presentation um, tonight, your slide presentation will also be available in the same place as this recording, correct? Correct. Perfect. Okay, so I'm starting to get questions um, from the people in the audience. So how do we enter the staff and student membership awards? Okay, I think they may be referring to how do they earn them. Um, they don't uh, have to do any type of uh, application for those. Um, they do just need to enter their members with the student um, membership type if they're doing students or the um, teacher staff membership type if they're entering teachers. 
And then also there's a yes, no question for teachers. If they happen to skip the type, they can answer the question, question yes or no. And it, I think that might have been the question they were asking. Yes, I, I believe that it had something to do with the awards um, that, were, that are out right now. So we're in October. What month is October? What award are we giving out this month, ladies? Teachers, we're appreciating our teachers this month. Um, if you, as I mentioned in the presentation, if you look on our uh, membership toolkit, we have these awesome, awesome flyers that Linda helped us put together. And they're fresh and new and things that you can distribute in your school or digitally online. Perfect. Now, ladies, I know that we, one of the jobs of the state um, PTA or the membership coordinator is to work with our um, region partners, which we call our region membership chairs, or as we refer to them as our RMCs. So Mary, would you be able to kind of give us a, like an idea of what the job of an RMC is? Um, and how, how would somebody would contact their RMC in their area? Sure. Um, so as we had mentioned earlier, we are going to make available um, the information on how to figure out who your regional membership chair is. I have to say, you guys are very fortunate, as, as are we. Uh, we have a great group that is so excited and um, wants nothing but the best for our membership year. Um, your RMC is a part of your region, okay? Uh, it's up to your RMCs to make sure that the units have the tools, the education, the guidance, everything that you would need to ensure that you're effective and efficient in recruiting members. Uh, your RMCs, as we affectionately call them, are New York State PTA's direct link to each and every individual unit. And they're the most important tool that we have on New York State to gauge the heartbeat of your units in our organization. Perfect. And, I, and it's funny, I got a, a little text message saying that we have a couple of our RMCs on with us tonight. Um, we have Car Karen Calora, we have Andrea Giattini, and we have Carleen Giordano. So um, would you like to, I don't know if you guys can unmute mute yourselves and say hello. Is there any way we can get um, Karen unmuted and she can, we can see what Karen looks like and say hello to us? I've clicked to um, ask them to unmute, but they would have to accept that. Okay. Uh, Andrea, Andrea is unmuted right now, if she would like to say something. Andrea. Good evening, like everyone. Hi, Andrea. Andrea. I'm the Hi. Nassau Region Membership Chair. And it's your second year, correct, Andrea? Second year, yes. And what are the great things that you're doing in Nassau this year? Oh, boy. Um, Nothing like putting you on the spot. Yeah, there, exactly. <laughs> um, well, I got some good news from one of our units last week that they've uh, got 102% um, participation on the terrific teachers, super staff. Their number was uh, off, but they, they ended up doing 102%. You know, That's Andrea, fantastic. it's funny you say that. There's so many um, units that we find that thought they might not be making it, and they've superseded their goals. Yep, definitely, definitely. I did get a message from Karen. She said she's not able to un unmute herself, but she'd like to say hello. Uh, she's on a computer with no microphone or camera right now. Perfect. Hello. And Mary, oh, where, is she where is Karen from? Karen is from Westchester, I think, East Putnam. Nice. So any of the people that are from Westchester, East Putnam region, um, Karen is your connection. Um, to all things membership and our connection, the person that we work directly with to give the, her the information. How about Colleen? Is Colleen Giordano, is she able to um, unmute herself? I've asked her, but I don't see a response. So she might not be seeing that. Okay. So ladies, we have a whole bunch of good things coming up in the next couple of weeks and the next couple of months. So can you talk a little bit about the next contest that we have going on in November so everybody can prepare for our next contest? 
Sure, for November, we are on a, looking to celebrate our student members. So we're definitely looking to promote um, all the reasons why that student should be members. Mary, did you have anything you want to add there? I did. Um, I wanted to also mention one thing. Yes, we have our students that we're going to be celebrating. Uh, we're going to be bringing you some highlights of um, our PTSAs. But I did want to bring to your attention at this point in time, how many of you are super excited with the way um, going back to school was. I'm sure some of you were a little kind of uneasy about how things were going, talking to your parents, talking to your friends, trying to figure out what the next step is. Um, they can put their I, answers in the, in the chat box. Yes. Yeah, I, that would I be great. Make sure that you understand it starts with membership, but PTA uh, can advocate for your child and does advocate for your child. And that's why we think it's so important that you become members. Our student members are even more important. You might be wondering, why would you want a student to become a member? They can advocate for things that they want in their school. Um, they can advocate for things that are going on in, in their school. Uh, for, for some time, uh, our kids were getting cold lunches and they said, mom, what can the PTA do about this? We're, we're tired of ham and cheese sandwiches. And I laugh because this is all they hear us talking about, advocating, fighting for things that you'd like, voicing your opinions and seeing what information you can gather, get a group together and make a change. So next month when you're ready, you want to start getting into talking to your students, making sure that they're members, and making sure that they're advocating and understanding what's going on in their schools and what they'd like to see as, as a, a change. Mary, we got a couple of comments while you were talking and that it was a great transition here in summers. We had White Plains prepared, world of difference from the spring. Mm -hmm. So we do have some people um, commenting uh, on your request for uh, how their transitions went. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. I'm very happy that uh, quite a few of you have taken this um, challenging year and turned it into something super positive. Um, I don't know about you, but I've learned a lot about my family that I didn't know, a lot about my neighbors that I didn't know, and people that really just didn't care one way or another what happened at school are 150% committed and want to understand what's happening and want to advocate and want to be a part of things. So this month, you want to focus on teachers and making sure that they become members. And next month, we want to get all our students on board and make sure they know what's going on. And Mary, Absolutely. Mary, I also want to go um, and ask you, um, we have coming up in November is our new New York State PTA Conference 2020, um, which is, um, is really exciting. Um, it's going to be a total virtual annual meeting, um, as well as keynote speakers and um, a lot of really great things. Um, but we're also holding workshops. And um, I believe that there's a workshop that you're going to be presenting, and it's pretty much a lot of what you just talked about, the advocating piece. So how do you connect membership with advocating. Um, give us a little, you know, um, hint at what they would expect if they did attend your workshop. Well, um, at my workshop, I'm going to tell you a little personal piece about how I advocated and how I started my PTA um, journey. Uh, we're also going to talk about how, honestly, membership and PTA and advocacy go hand in hand. Um, when you become a member, that gives you a seat at the table where all the decisions are made. And in your district, PTA has power. They understand that it's not you, the parent, it's you and your organization that are coming to the table to ask questions and they wanna be ready. They wanna be prepared and they want to work with you. Um, nobody wants to have the PTA upset with them, trust me. So <laughs> these are some of the things that we're going to be talking about, how you can become a member, and once you're a member, what to do with it, what are different things that you can do. And my biggest um, advice is always advocating, and I will be giving that presentation with a partner of mine, and it's going to be a, um, a fun time, and I hope you all attend. Perfect. And I also, a little birdie also told me that our other member, um, Dana Welsh, is going to be doing what we call an on-demand workshop. Um, Dana, I don't know if you 
if you can explain the on demand workshop um, and then tell us what are you going to be presenting? Yes, I will be talking about all things Member Hub, um, how everything has is transitioning with the store 2.0 going over again some of those resources, doing some um, live clicking around on the website so you can actually see things happening. But the on-demand, I am told, is going to be something that you can watch at your leisure. Uh, doesn't have to be during a certain time frame, so you can watch and learn um, at your convenience. Nice. So we got Member Hub and we got Membership and Advocacy all in, in one weekend. Um, and there's many, many other workshops that are going to be available, um, as well as um, it will be the first time that our members will actually be able to see the resolution and the advocacy process and the true parliamentarian um, process in effect. Um, if you've ever attended a live presentation or a live convention, um, this conference uh, will be along the same lines. Um, we'll be voting on bylaws amendments. We will be talking about resolutions um, and, and voting on resolutions. And we'll, be all, we'll also be electing um, a new, um, a new uh, set of officers. Um, so um, I'm putting in a little plug for the New York State PTA Conference 2020. Um, a lot of emails are going out, so hopefully you will join us. Um, it's only $50. And it's a three-day weekend, so three-day weekend for $50 is pretty cheap. Um, and you will be able to watch a lot of the events um, up into a certain point. Not If you can't make it that weekend and you want to watch it on Monday, you'll have that access. So, you know, please join us. But let's go back to membership for a minute because we only have a few minutes left. One of the questions that did come in is about students. And Mary, since it is, this month is our student month, um, no, teacher month. November is, is students. Um, what age is, can a child join PTA? You know, and, and if I'm a PTA and not a PTSA, can my kids still join? If your child can sign their name, they can become members. <laughs> um, it, you do not have to be a PTSA. Um, just know that there's an age limit. There's an there's an age that you can start to become on a board or handle money. Those are the things that you have to watch out for. But all of our members, uh, all of our children can become members. Perfect. All right. And I have a question. And it's a little bit confusing, so I want you to I want you to um, clarify this um, the statement that I I'm not sure the uh, member understood. It says. Is it confirmed that PTA dues should be cut by 50%? If so, will the PTA council dues also be cut? And this would be hard for us to meet our yearly goal. So can you give this person advice? So is this statement a true statement? So I just want to be clear, that is absolutely not a true statement, um, but I do want to encourage you to reach out to your region um, or your RMC. Uh, that is something that needs to be addressed because if it's something you're hearing, most likely other people are hearing it too. Um, so no, that is not something that we are doing right now. So, so give me some advice on how to meet my, my yearly goal. Um, well, first, you want to make sure that you have a plan, that you sat with your membership team, you, you saw what your membership uh, goals are, and um, tried to figure out what you were able to hit last year, things that you'd like to do differently. Um, as I said earlier, a lot of units were under the impression that this would be a hard year for them, and I'm not saying that it wouldn't, but they've been surpassing their goals because they've changed the way that they've done things. Change is good, and we are trying to uh, provide you with as many resources and tools so that whatever you might need is already there and readily available for you. Um, if you had any other questions, you could always feel free to reach out to us, but please use your RMCs. They're there to help you. Um, that is and then Mar Mary, yeah. I think um, I would love to reach out to some of those units who are surpassing their goals so that we can share that information with the rest of our units and, and help them celebrate their success, but also help them help others. So we definitely Absolutely. will be reaching out. 
And please look at our Facebook pages. We are going to be highlighting them there too. Make sure that you engage with us on Facebook. And if you want to know what they're doing, uh, reach out and ask so that we can have a dialogue. Um, we, we know what you need based on what you tell us you need. So we are trying to help. And um, yeah, I mean, the units, I know, I know any unit would be happy to share their information on what it is that they're doing. And actually, yeah. this, this today started our um, questions on Tuesdays where we're asking for, asking a question on Facebook and trying to create some dialogue there, some conversation. And the one there posted uh, today is actually about this very thing. So what are some of the fun things that you are doing or that you are participating in as a, as a parent um, in your PTA that are a little bit different this year? So if we can get some conversation started there, it just helps everyone. Absolutely. And the other thing that we've been doing is we've been monthly in our newsletter, we have been highlighting um, a unit or two units from a different region. So we've reached out to your, R to your region your region membership chairs, and we're asking them to share what you're doing. So if you're doing something really good, um, reach out to your RMC and tell them what you're doing so they can share it with us um, as well. Um, we think it's very important. So um, ladies, we've had some really great conversation tonight. Um, the presentation was excellent, um, as always. Um, I would like to first thank my my membership coordinator and, and, and very good friend and, and, and leader, um, Mary Sotomayor, um, for the presentation tonight. Um, I would also like to thank Dana Welsh, our insurance, um, our membership and insurance manager, um, who works with us as a team. Uh, Linda LaRosa, who hasn't come on, but she is a part of our team as well. Um, we have been working really hard this year. And ladies, you guys are amazing, awesome. I can't say enough. Um, I really enjoy working with you guys in this team. Um, and I'd like to bring our treasurer, Patty um, Frazier, back on to do a little housekeeping and, and, and lead us off. So thank you. Thank you so much, Helen. Um, as Helen mentioned, I am serving as the treasurer for um, New York State PTA right now, but tonight I'm actually representing our um, volunteer mentor um, program committee. Um, it's a small group of us that are, are starting to move forward with uh, a mentoring program. And one of the um, initiatives that came out of that is our web chat series that we've been doing. Um, we have certainly enjoyed meeting virtually um, so many of you and I, I recognize so many names of people that have joined us for all seven of our prior um, web chats and we encourage you to continue and really what we're doing for with the web chats now is we are responding to your requests so we hope that if you have an idea and we want to thank um, uh, Karen for her suggestion about nominations so we will be um, putting together a web, a web chat about nominating committees so um, we are really wanting to respond to what we you feel is best and, and could use some um, information for your units to have a successful year so please continue to send us emails in the chat at nyspta.org um, email address we monitor that on a daily basis so that we can be responding in between our chats and our um, leadership development webinar series that will happen on the first Wednesday evening of the month so I want to just join um, Helen in thanking her and Mary and Dana for their great um, contributions tonight and the help that um, they were here to offer as well as Linda behind the scenes. Um, also um, everybody else who took their time out tonight um, to join us. So uh, we look forward to hearing lots of great success stories. I'm a big believer in sharing success stories and so don't be shy. Please send them in to us. Um, we really want to be able to share your great news with the rest of our um, units across the state. So um, on that note we are going to complete the evening. Uh, <laughs> uh, we are going to end the recording and thank you all again for joining us. Look for the um, playback of this on our website and again please keep sending us emails. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.